<laughs> Hello goblins, it's Chris Aldrich Pipes. It's an episode of this week's Pipes. It's been warming up a bit this week. We had one day when it was uh, back up to 11. Very strange. What a week! What a week! Well, I've been burning both ends of the candle and uh, a bit of the middle of it as well. Had an amazing weekend. Went to London, went to the Phoenix Theatre to see Stranger Things The First Shadow. Uh, which is stage play, uh, prequel, set in the 50s, prequel to the Stranger Things Netflix show. So um, Chris Shaw is probably quite jealous right now. And it was awesome. Man, that show looked like a million bucks. It was just, they had everything going on. They had film footage, they had lights, they had crazy slow-mo, they had stuff popping up from the floor, they had revolving stages, they had stuff coming down, they had parts of the stage warping. It, the actors were amazing as well. Um, it's set at the school at uh, Hawkins High and it's a young um, Joyce Byers, she's not Byers yet though I don't think, or is she? No, that's Lonnie's surname that she gets, she's Joyce somebody else. There's a young Jim Hopper, there's an um, Alan, um, oh god, what is the name of Eddie, what, what's Eddie's surname? Oh, I can't remember Eddie's surname. Anyway, his dad is the school freak instead of Eddie. Munson, that's it, Eddie Munson. So Alan Munson. He was cool. There's a young Bob the Brain. There's a young Karen Wheeler, who isn't Karen Wheeler, she's Karen somebody else. There is the Creel family. Henry Creel, obviously being the main character here. It was super cool. Super cool. Oh, and a young Dr. Brenner. Of course. And some inciting incidences. They um, use the Philadelphia experiment as a kind of touchstone. I don't want to give too much away. What does it matter? I mean, you're either going to see the stage show or you're not really. Um, it's only playing in London at the moment. I don't know if it's going to go abroad. It was really good. So that was what I did on Saturday. <sighs> yeah, this week I have mostly been making pipes from dawn till dusk. So I've got three pipes to show you. One is currently available, and that's the one I'm going to show you first. It is another slimline mandragora root. If you're thinking, hey, he showed us this pipe last week. No, this is a new one. Uh, you can just tell because it's like a different style rim because I'm following the, um, the plateau. But all the same design elements. Twisted bark. Twisted bark.
and um, bulging stem. <laughs> Uh, so say a chocolate, a chocolate uh, linear sort of star rustication, uh, slightly sandblasted back to get some uh, sickly green in there, both on the bowl. And on the shank. Like I say, a bit more wild rim than last week's version um, because the plateau was more wild on this pipe. I think the flare came out the other side on the other pipe. I think it was shallow at this end and came out on the other side. So the, the rake is different. It's a sitter. It does sit. And some twisted rustication. And maybe rustication is kind of the wrong word. Carving, some twisted carving on the moss green Cumberland stem. So there you go. A mandragora root available. I'm liking these slimline ones. If you've seen others before, they are quite, they're normally quite large pipes. Quite big pipes. So I did these out of a desire to do something a little more refined, but keep much of the desi design elements. Um, I've still got a few ideas. I think I'm probably going to make another one and do, uh, carry through an element of the original into the, the rim that hasn't made it just yet, but it's coming. You might be wondering why I'm saying that I've been working all the hours this week, and it's because next week bathroom's being done. Travis knows, I've told him, we have the worst bathroom in the world. It is goddamn awful. The floor tiles, the floor is tiled, which means it's cold. And um, they didn't do it right. This bathroom was, was put in before we bought the house. We just haven't had a chance till now to get around to do anything about it. And it's cold and it's cracked because it wasn't put down with any, uh, you know, any lining. Oh, uh, what else? Oh, God, everything's wrong with it. Just the general tiling in the bathroom is just shoddy. Just kind of, it's just, it's really bad. Uh, it's just like off kilter. I don't know. I think they were blind. Uh, the toilet isn't attached to the floor. It kind of, it's just attached by the, you know, the, the, the piping at the back. So it kind of shifts and moves around in a very disconcerting manner. Uh, the shower is too big for the bathroom. It cuts off a whole section that, so you can't clean properly. There's no extraction fan. Um... They did some weird boarding of the ceiling uh, with that wasn't properly done and it's kind of bowing. So the ceiling's bowing in the bathroom. Um, what else? It's just, well, it's painful. But next week they're ripping it out and putting a nice one in. And that means 
next week is a kind of unknown for me. I don't know what I'll be able to get done. Uh, Steph can't work at home while they're, they're doing all of that, so she's going to be going to the office every day, which means I'll be running her there and back every day. That's going to lead into my day. I've decided that I'm going to uh, visit Mike at the... Uh, I nearly said Northern Briars. <laughs> Sorry, Ian. At Blake Mark Briars. I'm going to visit him on Wednesday or Thursday. I'm going to spend the morning rusticating some of his pipes. I'm not sure if he knows that, but he knows I'm going, but he doesn't know what my plan is. Just thought I'd show him what I do. So that'll be fun. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do the rest of the week. If I can make some pipes, that'll be good. But I'm kind of planning that it might be a bit too... Um, chaotic around here. We'll see. I'm not sure how long we're going to be without a shower for. I'm going to have to knit round to my daughters. <laughs> oh no, I've just taken... Oh, it doesn't matter. Next pipe. This week's strawberry. Really, some really lovely detail on the sandblast. That nice spider webbing effect. Where you've got the, um, the ring grain and then the straight grain. Actually, I suppose the briar burl, if you cut it the right way, effectively is a spider's web design. Um, cordovan finish. And earth and ivory stem. Some of you out there will know what these are all about. Um, I wasn't in theory meant to get cracking on these just yet but I now have to make so many of them that I've decided to <laughs> interleave them throughout through my normal com commissions and so uh, that's what I'm doing so that is another one what's that three down 450 million to go. I forgot. I didn't tell you what I'm smoking. Tilbury. It's, um, I thought, it's enough. I haven't smoked Tilbury in... Uh, too long and there's no reason not to anymore. Thanks Travis. It's, um, I don't know if I've said before, it's the only straight Virginia blend I smoke. Normally, I'm not a fan of, fan of straight Virginias at all, but Tilbury is a beast of its own. It just is a perfect thing and apparently if you age your Virginias correctly and you blend them correctly, straight Virginia can be wonderful but this is the only one I've ever found that I've fallen in love with. Final pipe. Now this pipe had me worried when I was discussing it with the customer. Uh, hi Edan. I think it's Edan. I-D-A-N. Her name is spelled. I think it's Edan. Edan Primo. Now, when we started talking, 
it started giving me lots of um dimensions can the pipe be this long and the chamber be this depth and when people start giving me specifics and when can it be rusticated in this way it makes me nervous it makes me really nervous it makes me think that they're um they're after something very specific and if that's the case that's not really the kind of pipe maker that i am you know it's not hand me a design with measurements to the millimeter and and that's the pipe i'll deliver i don't i don't work like that but the conversation continued and i started to get a feel for what um he was on about and a lot of the things played to my strengths and i thought i think i can make some tweaks to bring to bring it somewhat in line with his sort of um dimension requirement so this pipe is a little smaller than I would normally make sort of by instinct and so I was really concerned that I kept the, the balance right because generally my designs are kind of like all worked out and I keep to them because it has the balance that I like so I had to just work the bowl a bit to get it in line, you know, so that it wasn't, it wasn't sort of bowl heavy. But anyway, let me put you down. This is a a take on the on the tulip design. Um. The sort of feel that we were going for was something very plant-like. So something that I could imagine being in my poison garden was the way I started to think about it. And so we were discussing all different kinds of combinations of finish and stem combination. I, once we started going with like an orange, going to orange bowl, my preference was then to, to go black but he wanted to because it was going to go to a black stem but Idan really wanted that green that plant green in the mix if it had been me if I was thinking of this combination just straight off the bat I'd have probably gone with a um, moss green stem that would have been my instinct but the way that because I didn't want you might just be sort of see the break here so the shank ends here and the stem and this is the stem and obviously the the carving helps your eye flow over that join but I didn't want a stark colour break, which is why initially I would have chosen black as the, as the shank colour or moss green as the stem. But anyway, what I did was into the green, I mixed some black, darkened it right down. So it really, you, it does, your eye doesn't stop. There's not this hard sort of colour break. So I'm actually really quite pleased with the end result you just like then get the it's just quite dark but then as the fade comes in you get the the green as it then fades out into the into the quite fiery orange uh, the sort of the the linear carving I put a lot of flow into. I wanted it to feel quite organic. I hope you agree. A 
I do like a carved stem. So there you go. He dance tulip. There we go. That's it. All the pipes. So, if you're interested in the Mandragora, send me an email or contact me on one of the social media platforms that we commonly use. I will probably be back next week. Next week is a little unknown. I've got to make at least one pipe in the mix. Somehow. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to turn out. All right. However it does turn out, till next week, maybe, take it very easy, your loyal pipe maker. <laughs>